Hi. Used to this. Okay. Just have a few people coming in. How's everybody doing? Hey, if you're a student, would you stand up for a second? Let's get it up. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Jerry Hall. I'm the chair of the Public Education Trust. And I'd like to thank everyone for coming out this afternoon. I'd like to thank our scholarship donors. Uh, many have supported PET for uh, many years, and, uh, and thank you very much for that, everybody. I would also like to thank uh, the PET board. Um, if y'all stand up for a second, if you're here. The board. All right. And we have a CPA actually that helps us out, so I'm going to thank him. And uh, Karen Stroud and Dr. Pritz has been uh, wonderful for helping us to keep uh, PET uh, as strong as it's been. So thank everybody. All right. So this year, PET is putting uh, $65,000 to our schools. The back of your program will show you where the money is going if you want to kind of flip it over and you can take a look there and see. A week ago uh, we had our uh, classroom our uh, classroom impact grant reception. Some of you might have been here and uh, that's where we actually take money and put back into the classrooms for uh, special projects. And on our classroom impact grants, uh, we are awarded $28,500 that will touch uh, 11,000 students. This will also, uh, it, it will go to 19 schools, our uh, performing learning center, our elite special needs preschool, and um, but today, really, it's, it's, about, it's about this. It's about the scholarships that we are awarding. For, for the past two years, and this is very important, um, PET has had either um, everyone on the board to contribute money or time, or either to go and solicit money. So that's very, very, very important for us as a uh, uh, a foundation it, it gets us uh, gets us uh, recognized uh, amongst um, the higher level people that give to bet so it's very important uh, our teachers and and staff and uh, and people that work in the uh, administration uh, of the school uh, they have uh, they've given us ten thousand dollars roughly annually so it's really nice to see the school system involved. It, uh, you know, having that support, uh, it, it, it really makes a difference with us as well. For everyone graduating, this is about you, right? Uh, so we're all very, 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 very proud of you. Uh, and as Dr. Pritz would, would say, a little bit jealous because you're young. <laughs> so as you embark on your college studies and your college experiences, you have everyone's permission to have fun, to learn, and to learn to be a leader. After graduation and your careers have been established, I personally ask that you for not that you not forget the men and women in the military and the men and women that are in the service industries. At this time, uh, I'd like to call Dr. Uh, Pritz up to make a, 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 a speech from the administration side of the Douglas County School System. And after that, Tanya 
Jackson will be presenting the uh, scholarships. So enjoy your afternoon and thank you. A speech, I wouldn't do that to y'all. Uh, I just want to say thank you for being here this afternoon to celebrate this great occasion. Uh, in years past, we have done this uh, in conjunction with the teacher uh, grants, and uh, these have grown so much in the last couple of years that we had to split them, so that's an exciting thing. And we did the teacher grants last week and had a full house and again today. So thank you so much for being here to celebrate uh, kids doing great things. And I appreciate so much the uh, Public Education Trust and uh, all the work that the foundation does to raise money uh, for this exact purpose, to give back to uh, both our teachers and to our students. Uh, parents that are here, thank you so much for your support of your, uh, your student through the years. Um, all those uh, long nights and long weekends is maybe paying off just a little bit today. Um, but we are excited for the, what we're going to hear. And again, we are so thankful for uh, just having great, great kids in our school system. Thank you, and God bless each of you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pritz, for that greeting. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Tanya Jackson. I'm vice chair for PET, and I am delighted to be here and to call up names for our recipients of our scholarships. This is probably one of the best parts of being a board member is giving away some money and uh, encouraging you to continue to learn and, and to grow and develop and come back and be leaders, hopefully in Douglas County. Uh, but before we begin our program, I'd like to recognize uh, PET founding board members. If any are here, would you please stand to be recognized? PET was founded in 1993. Any founding PET board members? Any PET emeritus board members present? Would you please stand? Well, moving right along. As I call up your names, if a scholarship program has more than one recipient, I'm going to call up all the names and ask that you all come forward, and then you'll have an opportunity to uh, express your appreciation, a uh, one-minute limit. Uh, and afterwards, everyone has uh, spoken. We're going to ask that you will proceed to the rear to have a photo taken uh, with a representative from each scholarship group. Is that all right? All right. Are y'all ready to get some money? Everybody excited? Everybody ready to get some money? All right. Our first scholarship recipient uh, receiving scholarships made possible through the generosity of the Billy Yancey estate. Ms. Yancey was a lifelong Douglas County resident, a 1944 alumni of Douglas County High School, and a 45-year employee at CNS Bank in Atlanta. The recipients of the Billy Yancey Memorial Scholarship must plan on majoring in engineering or health care, and this year's scholarship brings the total in Yancey scholarships to an impressive $45,400. So you are very, very blessed to be one of those recipients. I will call up four names, and we'd ask that you come forward, and please excuse me. Uh, I majored in marketing, not English, so I dare not call last names because they are very special and unique, and I don't want to slaughter them. So I apologize if I even mess up your first name, all right? I ask that Carissa, Tyler, and Rusid, and Deborah please come forward. like to uh, first and foremost thank Mr. Billy Yancey for this um, generous scholarship and um, and thank you everyone for being here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, I would like to thank the Douglas County Public Education Trust and most importantly the donors of the Billy Yancey Memorial Scholarship. Uh, I will be using this scholarship to attend Georgia Tech, while, where I will be uh, majoring in mechanical engineering. Thank you. Okay, so obviously I'm not a high school senior. <laughs> my name's Kathy Beveridge, and my daughter Carissa 
is on a chorus field trip to New York City, so she could not be here tonight. But on her behalf, I wanted to say thank you very much to the Pet Scholarship Foundation and also to the Yancey uh, Scholarship Foundation. Uh, Carissa is planning on pursuing architecture at Georgia Tech. Thank you. Thank you. We'll ask a representative to proceed for your photo opportunity. Thank you. Our next uh, acknowledgement is for the Captain Herb Emery Memorial Scholarship established in 2016 by Karen Emery, his wife, to provide a loving tribute to her late husband and to help prepare the next generation of journalists. Captain Emery will forever be an icon in Douglasville and throughout Metro Atlanta. How many of us remember listening to him every morning as he provided all of those helpful, much needed traffic news from the helicopter vantage point. Yeah, we don't want to date ourselves, but that was, a, that was, <laughs> that was some awesome, awesome uh, opportunity to be able to uh, impart and to help us maneuver through Atlanta. So Pat today is honored to administer a scholarship with Captain Emery's name on it, and we are honored to have Mrs. Emery on our board. The first Captain Herb Emery Memorial Scholarship goes to Erica Bressner. I would like to give my sincere thanks to Mrs. Emery for providing me with this opportunity. Um, I'll be using it at, at the University of Georgia where I'll attend as a Ramsey Scholar this fall. So, thank you. Next is the Carmilla Hilton and Crystal Hilton Scholarship established in 2016 by our very own school system teacher, Carmilla Hilton. Carmilla and her sister Crystal are both educators in the high school and elementary school settings. Carmilla has been named Teacher of the Year four times. Crystal is a mathematician and instructional coach. The scholarship is for education or STEM majors, and this year's recipient is Marcus Knight. I'd just like to thank Carmilla and her sister for offering me this scholarship. Thank you. Man of many words. <laughs> Next we have the Clara Evelyn Brown Scholarship established also in 2016 to offer recognition and financial support to women entering the STEM field and to pay tribute to the namesake. The scholarship was established by her son, Pet Board member James Brown. It is for females, as I stated, who plan to pursue a STEM-related major or career. Mr. Brown recognizes that there is a shortage of females in the STEM industry, and he wants to do his part to change that. He could not be here today with us. He's traveling for work overseas, but he has a family friend here. Robin Joseph is here with us today, so we welcome Mrs. Joseph and uh, be sure that you head back for the photo after we recognize the scholar, which is Hannah. Um, I'd like to th thank the Pet Scholarship Program for this and the Claire Evelyn Brown Scholarship Program for recognizing the, the importance of women engineer in engineering and I'm very grateful, and I'll be using this money towards my education at Georgia Tech as a material science engineer. Next, uh, the Community Character Coalition of Douglas County was established to advocate teaching, demonstrating positive moral character to students, family, and the business community. When the coalition was disbanded in 2016 after 15 years of service, they transferred their remaining funds to the Pet Scholarship Fund. It is offered to residents of Douglas County who distribute, demonstrate positive character qualities and are current active volunteers with at least one Douglas County not-for-profit service organization. And this year we'd like to recognize Ashley and Kylie as recipients. Please come forward. Hi 
I guess I don't really have a representative to thank, but um, I'd like to thank the PET Foundation, and I will be using this scholarship to attend Georgia State University, where I will be studying fine art. I'm very thankful and blessed to have this opportunity and to be able to just be here in front of all of you guys and um, further my education. And so I just want to, uh, I'm going to use the money to uh, attend the University of Georgia and major in marketing business. So. Yeah. Next we have the Demon. I don't know why I can't speak today. <laughs> the Denim and Diamonds Charity of Douglas County. It's a not-for-profit volunteer organization created in 2011 to raise money for children's charities in Douglas County. Thousands of dollars have been raised over the year to help such organizations as the Boys and Girls Club and uh, CASA. Because Denim and Diamonds Charity is a volunteer organization serving the communities, applicants must be current active volunteers with at least one Douglas County not-for-profit service organization. You will note that volunteerism is a common thing for many of our scholarships. This year's recipients are Chelsea and Richard. Hello, my name is Richard Mazzi. Um, I'd like to thank any, everyone who's donated to the scholarship and made it possible. Um, I'll be using it to attend UGA and uh, take computer science. Hi, my name is Chelsea, and I'm, um, I'm very delighted to be honored this scholarship. And um, I don't really know yet where I want to go, but I'm planning on going to UGA. Thank you. Next, we have the Denise Company Scholarship, established as well in 2016 to provide scholarships to graduating seniors planning to pursue an education in welding, metal fabrication, graphic arts, industrial arts, project management, or a construction management. Denise Signs is a national signage and architectural element company that provides design, installation, service, and repair. Jennifer and Alan Denise have proudly operated as a family-owned company since 1983 in Douglas County, providing great working environment for their employees, promoting strong relationships with customers, and giving back to the community. Our recipients for this year are Alexandria and Adela. My name is Ayodele Babalola, and I would first off like to um, thank the Pet Scholarship Foundation and also the, the Denise Company for awarding me the scholarship. I'm not sure which college I want to go to yet. Um, I've made my decision, but um, I plan to use this scholarship under the industrial engineering major, so thank you. Hi, my name is Alexandria Edwards. Um, I want to first thank everyone that's donated to the pet scholarships. I plan to use this to attend SCAD, uh, Savannah College of Art and Design, to double major in industrial design and theater design and technology. We have the Don Remillard Scholarship established in 2010 in honor of our retiring Douglas County School Superintendent, Don Remillard to fund scholarships for Douglas County Performance Learning Center graduates. Don has served the Douglas County school system for over 40 years, including seven years on the PET board. He was instrumental in the creation of the PLC. This year's recipient is Ariel Sutton. Sutton. I would like to thank Don Remillard for making this scholarship possible and for also creating the Performance Learning Center because it has definitely been a huge impact on my life. It's allowing me to graduate a year early and I would also like to thank my principal, um, Dr. Cosper, for pushing me to my hardest limits when I wanted to procrastinate and I plan to use this scholarship money at the, uni or the um, West Georgia Technical College in dental hygiene.
We have Edward and Brenda Denovella Scholarship for Outstanding New Manchester High School Students. It was established this year in the namesake to provide assistance to New Manchester High School seniors who excel in academics, extracurricular activities, and community service. Mrs. Denovellis is a teacher at New Manchester. Mr. Denovellis is retired from Coca-Cola, but is now working in the auto automotive industry. He could not be here with us today, but we are glad that Mrs. Denovellis is. We ask that the following recipients please come forward. Lena, Piper, Jonathan, Iris, FEMA, and Tanai. Um, I want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Denovellis for the opportunity and the Pet Foundation. I'll be using my scholarship at Tennessee State University where I'll be studying dental hygiene. I would like to give a special thanks to Mr. and Mrs. Denovellis for providing this money towards me. I'll be using this money towards Florida and m University in Tallahassee, Florida to study physical and health education. I would like to thank Mr. and Mrs. Denvelis. I will be using this money at Columbus State University, majoring in exercise science. Hello, everybody. My name is Iris Marcus, and I'm going to be using this money for um, Georgia Highlands, and I'm going to be a nurse. I would like to thank um, Mr. and Mrs. Denvelis. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Next, we have Ghost Gym of Douglasville. They have been awarding scholarships through PET for a decade, and their scholarships have totaled over $25,000. Don't you love seeing businesses, local businesses, and individuals giving back to our community? The Ghost Gym scholarship recipients must participate for at least two high school years on a sports team, and this also includes cheerleading. We have the following recipients for 2017, Catherine, James, Madison, and Antonio. All right, I would like to thank the um, donors of the Gold Gym Scholarship. I'd like to thank my parents and Ms. Lynn Murray, and I'll be using this scholarship money to attend Savannah State University and major in marine biology. Catherine Gamble. Um, I would like to thank the Pet Scholarship Foundation for providing me with this scholarship as well as the Gold Gym sponsors. Um, I will be using this money uh, to attend the University of Georgia and major in biochemistry and molecular biology. Hello, my name is Robin Seekerman and my son is James Seekerman. And um, JT is not here today because he's playing baseball in Troop County but um, he plans to use the scholarship to major in finance or supply chain management at Georgia Southern University. And we really thank the folks at Gold's Gym for their support. Thank you. We have the Hometown Scholarship established in 2016 to recognize and financially reward graduating seniors who attended kindergarten through 12th grades in Douglas County school systems. The scholarship was established by Amy and Mike Shaddix, uh, Douglas County school system alumni and lifelong Douglas County residents. Ms. Shaddix has worked in the system for over 23 years, currently serving as media spe specialist at Eastside Elementary School by requiring the hometown scholarship applicants to have attended their school career in DCSS schools. Mr. and Mrs. Shaddix are showing their genuine commitment to Douglas County and the Douglas County community. Jamie Perry, come on down. Jamie Perry and I just want to say thank you so much to the Pet Scholarship Foundation and Mr. and Mrs. Shaddix. Um, I'm not quite sure where I want to go to college yet, maybe Georgia State, but um, I'll be majoring in pre-dental pre bio biology. Thank you so much. Yeah. 
Next, we have the John and Stephanie Bleakley Scholarship established in 2016 to assist students pursuing a career in the automotive industry, aviation, or business. The scholarship was established by the Bleakleys as lifelong uh, community volunteers and owners of John Bleakley Ford and Lithia Springs. This year's recipients are Kenneth and Aaron. Hi, I'm Aaron Whitwer. Um, I would just like to thank the Bleakleys for this scholarship, and I will be using the money to go to Auburn University and major in aviation management. Next, we have the Juanita Williams Memorial Scholarship, established in 2016 by Douglas County High School Counselor, Ms. Dr. Joy Moses, and family members to pay tribute to their loved ones, while at the same time helping students follow in the namesake footsteps to give back to others by participating in creative educational endeavors and celebrating diversity. Uh, Shanika, if you would please come on down. Shakana Bennett. <laughs> I apologize. Hello, everybody. My name is Sakina Bennett. I would like to thank, first and foremost, my family and friends and everybody who supports me. I would like to thank the Pet Foundation, as well as Dr. Joy Moses. I hope that Mrs. Williams' legacy lives on forever. I plan to attend Bard College in New York City in the fall, where I will um, major in dance and education. And I hope to come back and take over the Fame Dance Program at New Manchester High School. Thank you. <laughs> We are winding down. The Catherine Milner Sheehan Memorial Scholarship established in 2015 to pay tribute to Mrs. Sheehan, a former Douglas County School System superintendent and to assist education majors. After Mrs. Sheehan passed away in 2015, her longtime friend and former colleague, Mrs. Harriet Morgan, established this scholarship with PET. PET is particularly honored to administer this scholarship since Ms. Sheehan was instrumental in PET's founding in 1993. Christina Gaines, please come on down. Hello, I just wanna say I am so honored to be the recipient of the Katherine Shaheen Scholarship. Um, I plan to attend the University of West Georgia and pursue a degree in early childhood education while also earning my certification to teach English abroad. Thank you. The Kiwanis Club of Douglas County has awarded thousands of dollars in scholarships to students since the 1983 school year. Scholarships are offered annually to graduating seniors who are members of a key club sponsored by the local Kiwanis Club. Because Kiwanis Club is a volunteer organization serving the community, applicants must also volunteer in the community. We have the recipients Chelsea, Whitney, Deborah, who is not with us today due to uh, flu, and Brooke. Hi, I'm Brooke. I would like to first off thank the Pet Foundation um, for donating money to the um, to all the scholarships donors here, um, and I would like to thank the Kiwanis Club especially for granting me this scholarship money and providing me countless opportunities to volunteer in my community. I'll be using scholarship money to attend Georgia Southern University and major in kinesiology. Hi, I would like to thank the Pet Foundation and the Kiwanis Club for giving me this scholarship. Thank you. Hi, I'm Whitney, and I would like to thank the Kiwanis Club and, of course, PET for selecting me to receive this scholarship. I'm honored to be able to use this money to attend Kennesaw State University in the fall. Next, we have the Nora McDonald Memorial Scholarship established by College and Career Institute staff in 2012 to honor the memory of Mrs. Nora McDonald and to fund scholarships for students graduating from the CCI. Mrs. McDonald served as the office manager at CCI from 2009 until the time of her death in 2011. 
Frankie and De Gina. Is that correct? Come on down. Hi, I'm Frankie, and I would like to thank the Norm McDonald Foundation, and I will be using this money to attend Georgia State in the fall to major in nursing. Thank you. Oh, uh, sorry. Jessica and Paraja, are you here? I'm sorry, your name was on the next page. My apologies. Come on down for the Nora McDonald Memorial Scholarship. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I would like to thank all my friends and family for coming out today, and especially the Nora McDonald Foundation as well. Um, I will be using my scholarship money at Georgia State um, starting in the summer and majoring in psychology. Next, we have the Reverend Albertus Hilton Memorial Scholarship established last year by the namesake's daughter, Carmilla Hilton, to recognize uh, and financially assist graduating seniors planning to pursue a theology or STEM major. The scholarship also pays a tribute to his beloved namesake. Reverend Hilton had a deep passion for education, and this scholarship continues his legacy for learning. Ryan, if you will please come on down, uh, but Ryan is not, cannot be here tonight. He sends his sincere thanks to Mrs. Hilton. Ryan is at Duke University today through Sunday. So congrats to Ryan. Finally, we have the Wellstar Douglas Hospital Auxiliary Scholarship. It's Pat's newest scholarship. The auxiliary is comprised of local volunteers who manage the hospital's information desk, gift shop, transport and discharge patients, and provide support to staff and nurses in the outpatient day surgery, medical imaging, and the stat clinic. The auxiliary uses the majority of their funds, earnings from the gift shop, to fund needed equipment for the hospital. A portion of those earnings are able to provide scholarships to recognize and financially assist the next generation of healthcare professionals. Imani and Allison, come on down. Um, I would like to thank Pet and the Auxiliary for the scholarship, and I'll be using the money at Tuskegee University in the fall to major in biology. Hi, I would like to thank Pet and the Wellstar Douglas Hospital Auxiliary for this scholarship. I will be using it at the University of Alabama at Birmingham to major in biomedical sciences. Thank you. <laughs> And we are concluding with the WIN3 Charitable Fund Scholarship established last year through a charitable fund created from the estate of Judge Dan P. Wynn. Judge Wynn wanted his estate to create a charity to honor his parents, Frank M. and Mary Peace Wynn. Mrs. Wynn, in coincidentally, was a teacher for Douglas County School System. The charitable fund is administered by a local attorney and community leader. Frank C. Wynn, son and grandson of the namesakes. Academics and financial need are the primary determining factors of this scholarship. Should these recipients keep up their grades in college, their scholarship may be renewed for up to four years. That's a blessing. Uh, we have Maria, Eleanor, and Austin. I'm Maria, 
that, and I am blessed to honor to receive this um, scholarship. I appreciate Mr. Wynn and his family. I will be using this scholarship to major in early childhood education at West or at the University of West Georgia this fall. Thank you. Hello, my name is Austin Sharp, and I'd like to thank not only Mr. Wynn, but his father and his grandfather and grandmother for setting this up. Um, the scholarship's not only going to help just to get to college, but have the opportunity to have a higher level of uh, education, and I plan on using this to go to the Institute of Technology in Georgia. Hi, I'm Eleanor Rager. I would like to thank the Pet Scholarship Foundation and also the Wynn family. I'm going to be using the scholarship to further my education at the University of Georgia with a major in horticulture. And that concludes the awarding of our scholarships. Can we give all of our recipients a round of applause? We salute you and we expect great things from all of you. Thank you so much. And now I'll ask if Don would please come forward for uh, closing remarks. Thank you, Don. Good evening. Our students didn't have a whole lot to say, but I do. Let me start on behalf of the Pet Board, giving a huge thank you to our scholarship sponsors. Obviously, without you, there would be no scholarships and we wouldn't be here today, so we thank you very much. By providing these scholarships, thank you. By providing these scholarships to these young people, you planted a seed, and I'm confident we're gonna see something really big and beautiful come from that seed, so a world of thanks to you. I also want to thank uh, Dr. Pritz and other members of the school system staff. A number of you all are here for coming and supporting these students. A big thank you to the Pet Scholarship Committee. We had a lot of scholarships to read. It was a lot of work, and so we appreciate the hard work of the Scholarship Committee. In fact, we had so many to read we went out and recruited some volunteers in the community, some retired educators and other supporters of PET who aren't on the board, but they agreed to come read for us. So we thank you very much for that. And if you were one of our guest readers, if you've not already done so, if you'd stop by the welcome table up here as you leave, we've got a little token of appreciation for you. The remainder of my remarks are to our scholarship recipients. First and foremost, I'd like to encourage you to contact us at PET every now and then and let us know how you're doing. You've got Lynn Murray's email address. She's been corresponding with you. She's got business cards on the welcome table right up here. And uh, it makes us feel good to hear from you from time to time. So I know you're going to be busy, but just take a minute and shoot us an email and let us know how you're doing or, or maybe message us on Facebook. Either one would be fine. In my closing remarks to you, I'd like to do three things. I want to congratulate you, I want to give you some advice, and I want to challenge you as you go forward. So let me start by congratulations. I want to congratulate you on winning this scholarship. I've read pet scholarships for years, and by far we had the most scholarships and some of the highest quality scholarship applications that I've ever read. So <laughs> there were many students, graduating seniors in our school system who applied and were really deserving, stellar students who did not get a scholarship. So I want you to go home tonight feeling really good about yourself because you beat out some really good students. We were blown away with your academic accomplishments. We were blown away by your school and community service and involvement. And most of all, we were blown away by your aspirations going forward. You know, you all are the future leaders of society, and I, for one, am feeling pretty good about you all being in charge in a few years. So good luck to you. I also want to congratulate you on graduating from high school. Now, you all are so smart, you probably never even thought that you wouldn't graduate from high school, and I understand that. 
but graduating from high school is still a big deal. It's a milestone in your life. You'll have others when you graduate from college, your wedding day, when you have children, but graduation from high school will always be part of who you are. I can guarantee you one thing, for the rest of your life, every now and then, somebody's gonna come say to you, where'd you go to high school? What year did you graduate? And in fact, in this day and age of technology, your high school or your graduation date or your high school mascot may very well be part of a username or a password or one of those security questions you have to answer when you forget your username and password. <laughs> high school graduation is always going to be a part of you, so we congratulate you on that. But I also want you to realize why you did most of it by yourself and you deserve most of the credit, you had a lot of people helping you along the way. First and foremost, your parents, your grandparents, other family members, all these educators you've had over the years, and by educators I mean teachers, counselors, media specialists, principals, and now you've got some others who are behind you, this pet board, these scholarship donors. So when you think about how much you idolize some celebrity that's a movie star or a singer or an actor. Think back, what have they really done to improve your life? And I think you'll reflect back and discover that the people that are really part of your support team are those folks that I just mentioned. Now for the advice part. Let me give you a little bit of advice. And, and when Lynn asked me to, to do the closing remarks, I thought about what I was going to say in the uh, a passage from the opening paragraph of the historic novel, A Tale of Two Cities, came to mind. That book was written in 1859 by Charles Dickens. And you may wonder, why did that come to mind? Well, here's the passage. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was an age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. Now, how does that apply to you? Well, let me break it down for you. And for my purpose, I'm going to use my literary privilege to change the word was to is, since we're talking about the present. So let's start. It is the best of times. I'm envious. You all are entering some of the best years of your entire life. Four, five, six, seven years if you go to graduate school, it's going to be absolutely great. You'll have a little sadness as you say goodbye to your high school classmates. Uh, some of them you'll see from time to time, but they're going to scatter everywhere. Some of them you may never see again, and that is kind of sad, but you're going to start meeting new classmates, people that are going to be lifelong friends. You may very well meet your future spouse while you're in college. A lot of people do, and I think about that. You're also going to meet a lot of people associated with the college, professors, administrators, alumni, who may very well be huge mentors to you as you start this journey on your new career. In addition to that, a big part of college is social life. Now, I know some people say, you're going to college to learn and not to play, but that's not true. You've heard the old saying, all work and no play. You know, it's healthy to have a good social life, and just about anything you're interested in is available on a college campus. Athletic events, concerts, plays, art shows, uh, activities through clubs and organizations, fraternities, sororities. Tons of things are going to be available to you. So here's my advice. Enjoy it while you can, because when you finish college, you're going to be locked into a rigorous career, probably a house to take care of, bills to pay, children to take care of, and you're gonna look back on it and say, gosh, I wish I'd have done more stuff when I was in college when I had time to do it. Those years that I just talked about are gonna be great too, but you can't ever go get those college years back. So enjoy it while you're there. Stop and smell the roses. <laughs> Moving on, it is the worst of times. If you've been wondering, I wonder if college is really gonna be hard? It is. It's going to be hard, let me tell you. Uh, the competition is going to be tough. You all were some of the top students in your school. You're the guys that busted the curve for everybody else on the grades. When you get in college, all your classmates are going to be just like you. 
and you're going to be competing against them and it's going to be a lot tougher. The coursework's going to be a lot harder and you're going to find days that you're absolutely exhausted. You're worn out and you're thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, I got a project due in two weeks in this course. I got a term paper due in a week in this course. And now I'm looking at staying up all night tonight to study for a major exam in yet another course. I don't think I can do it. I just don't think I can do it. Let me ease your mind. You can do it. I promise you, you can do it. So here's my advice to you. Prepare yourself mentally for it because it's going to happen. And push through it. You know what they say, when the going gets tough, the tough get going? You all are tough. You may not realize it, but you are. And when you do push through it, you're going to feel a lot better about yourself, and you're going to develop that confidence that you need because those days are going to happen again. College is like a roller coaster. You'll have times where there's more to do than you can possibly think you can get done, and then you'll have a little hiatus, and then the semester will be over, and you won't have anything to worry about for a little while, and then it'll all start up again. So some more advice to you. Develop good time management skills, and I'm sure you've got some now, but it's going to be even more important in college. When you get that syllabus from the professor on the first day or two of a class, and it says you've got a project due at the end of the semester, that doesn't mean you have to start on a project at the end of the semester. If you'll develop the time management skills to incrementally along do some work on that when you're not so overwhelmed with other stuff, you'll find it's a lot better. And you also need to develop the self-discipline. I can promise you, your professors are not going to mother you like your teachers in middle school and high school did. They're not going to keep reminding you, don't forget we got a test Friday, don't forget that project's due in two weeks. That's not going to happen in college. And your mom and dad are not going to be there to remind you. They're not going to be there to say, all right, get up, get dressed, you're going to be late, you got to go to school, eat the right foods, do the right things. That's not going to be there. You've developed some autonomy, and you deserve it. You've earned it. But at the same time, you've got to develop the responsibility to deal with it appropriately. Moving on. It is an age of wisdom. Well, that's what college is all about. And you're going to find that there's lots of opportunities to help you meet these lofty career goals that you have. Now, they may not just fall in your lap or come knocking at your door, but they're going to be there. There's lots of meaningful courses that will be available to you to take. It'll be up to you to sign up for them. There's lots of uh, activities on campus, guest lecturers, national, even world famous people coming to your campus to lecture. And if it's in an area of your interest, and particularly your career interest, take advantage of it. There'll be opportunities to join a research team at your college. Some of you all going into the medical field be a great opportunity for you. There may be even some internships or some jobs available to you. You may have an opportunity to study abroad like one of the young ladies talked about wanting to teach abroad maybe. Those things are going to be there for you. So my advice to you is this. Be in the outlook for those good opportunities and take advantage of them if they're appropriate. Again, you may have to look for them. It may just be a notice on a bulletin board or a professor just may make a remark. Any of y'all interested in an internship? Here's what you need to do and move on. So kind of be looking for those things. When you're pre-registering for your next semester, don't be one of those students to say, I'm going to find the easiest courses and I'm going to find the easiest professor I can possibly take. You know, you're going to get into college what you or you're going to get out of college what you put into it. And you're going to have to work hard, and it's going to cost you and your folks a lot of money, and you're going to be putting in a lot of effort. So get some bang for your buck and your time and your effort. Take those rigorous courses because that's going to pay off. When you see successful people, they didn't get there by taking the easy way out. The honest truth is this. When you see your dream job, it's going to be other people's dream job, too. And so you're going to be competing against the best of the best. You know, it, it kind of irks me when someone says, oh, they got this, so-and-so got this great job. They're so lucky. They're not lucky. Don't kid yourself. Hard work trumps luck every day of the week. So don't disappoint that support team. 
your family, your former teachers, the pet board, your scholarship sponsor. Challenge yourself when you're in college. Have fun, find a balance between the two, but don't look for the easiest way out because if you do, you're not gonna be competitive in the workplace. And the last part of that phrase I read was, it is an age of foolishness. You're going to be subjected to lots of temptations, things that are not in your best interest. And you know what they are. I'm not going to go over them. You know exactly what they are. Unlike opportunities that won't fall in your lap or knock on your door, temptations will fall in your lap. They will knock on your door. They'll break your door down to get to you. So here's my advice to you. Ask yourself the following. If I do this, will it help me reach the goals I've set for myself? If I do this, will this make my parents and other members of my support team proud of me? If I do this, is it gonna have a negative effect on all the hard work I've done from kindergarten through high school graduation and now in college? Do I really wanna risk ruining my life over this one mistake? And if the answer to those questions is no, then just say no. And if you're thinking now, does that really happen? Yeah, yeah, it happens, it can happen, it does happen, it will happen. It's happened to students who graduated from this school system and it tears me apart that they have ruined their lives over it, some stupid mistake. It's happened to a valedictorian, I know, at one of our schools. So it can happen to anybody, and it certainly can happen to you if you're not careful. Now for my challenge to you. First of all, I challenge if the, the advice I've given you in the last couple minutes applies to you in any way, then uh, use it. I challenge you to be a good person. Uh, be like that person that uh, Tim McGraw sung about. Be humble and kind. Remember the values you learned at home and the values you learned while you were in school. Remember the golden rule and the Ten Commandments and be a good person. Continue your involvement in your school and your community while you're at college and to serve folks as best you can. Take a few minutes to thank your support team. I've already asked you to stay in contact with Pitt from time to time, just let us know how you're doing. But take the opportunity to tell those people who've really helped you, sometimes by a pat on the back and a kind word, sometimes by a kick in the rear end and a good chewing out, but they, they, it's always done because they love you and they care about you and they want you to do better. Take time to tell them thank you. What you say to them is, thanks for helping me and supporting along the way, I appreciate it. You see how long it took? So do it in person if you can. Call them if you need to if they're not close by. Write a nice little thank you note and send it. Even sending an email or a text message. I'll tell you, it's going to do two things. It's going to make their day, and it's going to make you feel a whole lot better. These scholarships that you got today are an act of kindness, so I'd like to challenge you to pay it forward. You're not going to have any money in the next few years for sure. So I'm not talking about funding a scholarship for somebody. Maybe years from now, you'll look back and say, gosh, somebody was nice enough to give me a scholarship and now I can do the same thing for someone else. That'd be great. Pay it forward by just doing some act of kindness. What it is, I don't know. You don't know right now, but when you see it, you'll know it and do it. And as I begin to close, I just want to tell you this. The world is your oyster. Embrace it. Go forth and do great things to make this world a better place. I think I speak for everyone here today as I close by wishing all of you the very best in this exciting new chapter in your life. The Pet Board thanks everyone for attending and our ceremony today is adjourned.